Well, today we are talking about an emotionally charged headline-making story involving an innocent child, a decorated war hero, and horrific allegations of sexual abuse. Now, two months ago, just two months ago, a jury in Kansas convicted 31-year-old George Ferenz of two counts of aggravated sexual assault and two counts of indecent liberties with a child and sentenced him to life in prison for molesting his stepdaughter when she was just seven years old. The question is, has a child molester been taken off the streets here? Or is an innocent soldier sitting behind bars for a crime he did not commit? Now, the answer to that question depends on whose side of the case you're on. In preparation for this show, my staff and I have gone through these documents and more, sorting through the details of this story because the people closest to George, his ex-wife Amanda, his parents Harold, and Cindy are divided over what happened. Things are so heated that both sides have online petitions with one side fighting for his freedom and the other wanting to make sure he stays behind bars. But they're all here today. First up is George's ex-wife, Amanda, who says even though their marriage was rocky at times, she never imagined that George would have harmed her daughter until the day the little girl revealed every mother's worst nightmare. On October 22nd, my life changed forever. My seven-year-old daughter was sexually assaulted by her stepfather. I became confused and concerned when she started talking about George being in the shower with her. I began asking her questions. Were you wearing anything or were you naked? And she said, naked. And I said, did George touch your private parts? She told me, I can't tell you, it's a secret. I told her I need to know the truth right now. And she said, yes, he tickled my private part. Did you? touched George's private part. And she said, yes, he asked me to tickle his private part. I knew something was very, very wrong. That's exactly why I took her to the police station. The detective asked my daughter, would it be okay if you came into this room? Because I want to talk to you. My daughter said, I guess that's okay. And the detective came out and said, this happened and it's worse than you think. I start crying. <sighs> I was just screaming. Two days after, the detective called me to tell me George was going to be arrested. On September 11th, 2013, my daughter was the first witness in George's trial. She was extremely nervous. When the judge read the first count and said guilty, George's head just dropped. And then the judge read the second guilty, and that one registered to me that he didn't get away with this that my kids are gonna be safe. George started sobbing. I felt angry because I felt he was only crying for himself. He had shown no feelings towards my daughter or myself during this whole time. The only reaction coming from George's parents was that they were supporting him. They choose to be blind. They flat out refused to even acknowledge all the terrible things that George admitted to. And so they've started this attack against me. You believe for certain that this happened? Absolutely. I absolutely know No, this no doubt in your mind? None. Um, because he denies this fully and completely, correct? Yes, he does. How did you find out about this? You, you were working night shift, right? Correct. You came home and the right clothes weren't in the right place. I came home about 1.30 in the morning and went to bed. And when my daughter woke up for school the next morning, she came out of her room dressed, but not in the outfit that I laid out for her. So I went into her bathroom and looked for it. And it wasn't on the floor where it would have been. And so I went back to her and I said, where is this outfit? If you wore it yesterday, why isn't it in your bathroom? And she said, because I showered in your shower. And she's never done that before. There's no reason for her to. Okay. Why did you take a shower in my bathroom? Because I took a shower with George. I said, did you take a shower with George in the shower? 
or George was in the bathroom while you took a shower. There was a difference. And she said, with George. Were you wearing anything or were you naked? She said, naked. So said, George wearing anything? No, he was naked too. Honey, did George touch you at all? And she said, well, he gave me a hug. I said, okay. But, honey, did George touch your private part? And she said, well, yes, he tickled my private part. I said, did George ask you to, or did you <coughs> tickle his private part? And she said, I can't tell you, it's a secret. And she buried her head in the pillow. You need to tell me the truth right now. Did you touch George's private part? And she said, well, yes, he asked me to tickle his private part. What would cause you to say, did he touch you inappropriately? Why, why would your mind go there? Because he was taking a shower with a seven-year-old little girl naked. Uh -huh. That in itself, to me, is absolutely wrong. And did you confront George about this? No. You just called the police? I took my daughter to the police station. You two were having some marital disharmony, right? Correct. You were having some conflict. Yes. And you understand that sometimes when people get into conflict, they try to lash out and hurt the other person. Have you ever made false allegations towards George prior to this? I have. Why? My husband and I had gotten into physical altercations. We have tussled <clears throat> before. Um, what I told the friend was that George hit me, and that was false. That was a lie. Why did you do that? I felt if I told him that we were just tussling back and forth and George had put me in a police hold, that he wouldn't take that as seriously as if I had told him that he uh -huh. hit me. And the police have been called on you three times? Yes. Um, because you threatened self-harm? Once. This all goes to your credibility. You understand that, right? I do understand that, yes, absolutely. All right. Now, George's parents, Harold and Cindy, say their son, a decorated Army serviceman who served a tour in Afghanistan, is just innocent. She said, he's, they just say he's just flat innocent and that Amanda is out to get him by hatching this sinister plan to put him behind bars for a crime that he just didn't commit. We'll be right back. I believe my son George was falsely accused and wrongfully convicted. He was treated as guilty until proven innocent. He would never do anything to harm a child at all. And later, she got the next morning, she put on new clothes, didn't change her underwear, and you took her right into the police. The nurse report said there was a slight redness, and then they did swabs everywhere. They found absolutely nothing, zero. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil, she claims her ex kidnapped her son from the hospital. My son is being raised in a Mormon cult. They have brainwashed him. Did you kidnap this child? No, sir. He's just a liar. Should the boy stay with his father? You gave your son permission to go with him. But I had no idea that the plan was to never bring him back. Or should he be back with his mom? My stepfather was very abusive. He told me I was his slave and he owned me. It never happened. Did you steal food because you were starving? Yes. And what happened if you got caught stealing the food. They would beat me. Nobody beat you. Have you been brainwashed? She's the one I brainwashed me. That's Monday. I believe my son George was falsely accused and wrongfully convicted of molesting his stepdaughter. George had a very good relationship with Amanda's daughter. He treated her like she was his own daughter. George had said that he and Amanda had talked about a divorce. I had a bad feeling about everything, that something was going to happen. And Amanda did. She had to make him look worse than she was. 
Amanda's ultimate goal in this situation was to get custody of our grandson. We immediately suspected that Amanda had something to do with encouraging her daughter to say these things about him. Her goal seemed pretty apparent that she wanted to get custody of both children. George had told her over my dead body. So I think she achieved her goal. She got total control. She got George out of her life. And George is still on the hook to pay child support even though he's in prison. The police, I felt, from the very beginning just went with, we think you're guilty, and he was treated as guilty until proven innocent. When George was found guilty, we were shocked. We felt that there was a ton of reasonable doubt. We had a fight from the very beginning from his arrest with the police. We were basically saying, well, we're going to find all kinds of DNA evidence. They didn't find anything. There was zero DNA evidence on her body anywhere of any sort. I believe that George is innocent of everything he was charged with. <laughs> every ounce of my heart and soul. My son George could never have done the things he was accused of and convicted of. It's totally against his nature. He's a very nice, easygoing person and would never do anything to harm a child at all. We've been talking to Amanda, Harold, Cindy, and Frida, who say their family was ripped apart over a year ago when an allegation of sexual abuse was made by Amanda's seven-year-old daughter against Harold and Cindy's son, George. Now, George is currently incarcerated on a life sentence after being recently convicted on two counts of aggravated sexual assault and two counts of indecent liberties with a child. I want to remind everyone we are talking about serious sexual allegations. This is not a show for children. Why is he in jail for life? Because he was falsely accused and wrongfully convicted. There was a pattern of behavior leading up to this uh, that, that culminated in events on 1 October. It was actually the second time she tried to commit suicide. She just said she only tried to do it once. There's three police reports, one for a fight, the second for the first suicide attempt when he took a knife away from her and was holding her down on the couch. The third time was when she had a house full of kids, babysitting kids. She got drunk. He got home. She took a knife and again claimed she was going to commit suicide. So, and then before that, she lied again. She was talking to two different sergeants in his group, basically saying that he beat her and left marks on her when none of that happened. He didn't even touch her at all. And they saw it the very next day that nothing happened. So by the time we get to this event in October, she's making these false statements. She's, she says, I'm going to take both kids and I'm going to leave. Well, she ended up buying bus tickets for her and her daughter and ended up staying and the very next day, we're talking to him about, you need to get out of this relationship. Things have just gone too far. And it's going to not be good for the kids. And you just need to end it. So we said, you need to start doing something about it. The very next day, on October 2nd, he took her to get a psychological evaluation. They set an appointment for the end of the month, 31 October. So, and then we said, let's move things forward. And they said, well, we're talking. Manon, he said, we talked about what we're going to do and that she would keep her daughter and that I would hold Brexton. And we would work out an arrangement under Kansas law, not necessarily one person has custody or the other. So we thought, okay, things are starting to go that way. You do believe that your son is innocent here? We know he's innocent. Completely. Well, you don't know he's innocent because you weren't there that night. No, I just, again, so, like I said uh, before, he's, he's not going to do anything like this. We know our son. We know his character. You know him as a father and as a son. And as a yes. son. All right, and I, I, I get what you're saying, and I, I'm the one that brought up credibility right. issues with her because I want everything on the table here. And while everything you say is true about her, if it's true about her, and you may disagree with some of that, but you do have a problem with alcohol. Would you agree? Absolutely, I do. And you're not drinking now? Of course not. Because you're pregnant? Correct. I mean, she could be a fallen down, drunk, crazy, wild. That doesn't mean he didn't do this. It just means that you have to look seriously at her accusations. Well, again, it's one of the, to me, it's one of the world's amazing coincidences that there's this whole pattern of behavior leading up where she says multiple times she's going to take the kids and leave. And, that, and he stops her. He says, take your daughter, but not my son. And then they have this final bad argument, and then they finally agree that there's going to be a divorce and that custody is probably. And then all of a sudden, two weeks, a couple weeks later, these allegations come up where she, in the morning, says, Here's what my daughter said you did, and we're like... And there, there were two trained police officers that did interviews here. Uh, this went before a judge. It went right. before a jury. Uh, there was a trial where both sides had the opportunity to present evidence, and he was convicted. 
I was. He was wrongly convicted, I think. And, and because, since, but yeah. you do understand what I'm saying. This yes, isn't sir. just all her. No, I understand. The jury, the jury heard a lot of stuff, and we have issues with the investigation, with the police officers making false You say false it's textbook bad police work. A lot of it was, yes. Well, we'll talk about that. Next, what George uh, admitted to the police about what happened that night with his stepdaughter. Plus, George's fiance is here and says the love of her life is sitting behind bars for a crime that he just didn't commit. We'll be right back. Amanda is unstable. She went for the jugular. I really do believe that the little girl was coerced. It's disgraceful that such a wonderful human being is being put through this. And later, when a mother is focused on someone abusing their child, they see it with a clarity like a dog with a bone. But you tell five different stories here about where the clothes were. Why is that? Next week on Dr. Phil. You have an addict for a daughter, and you're giving her money to make yourself feel better, not to help her. I think that's a crock of is this father killing his daughter? He picks me up and he takes me to the drug house. In what world would any parent do that to their child? An obsessed love triangle. I love Chris Outerfield. Chris loves me. And you say you were engaged to Chris. He gave me this ring. Did you ask her to marry you? Not that I can recall. Do you have trouble being unclear? I do sometimes. I believe that my mom killed my sister's best friend and buried her in the backyard. Our daughter's outrageous accusations. You said you were passed around to your dad's friends at sex parties. Did this happen? No, none of it happened. Oh, my God. No, you don't get to do this. It is not a response to say, oh, well, I just thought. Oh. If you want to unplug, we're done. After George's trial and conviction that his family took to just posting stuff all over the internet about this case. It's their vendetta against me. They have refused to believe George is guilty and that I am the reason he's in prison and so they've started this attack and for these people to completely undermine that case and my daughter's justice is disgusting. It's disturbing, it's hurtful, and it makes me mad. Well, that was Amanda, whose ex-husband, George, was recently convicted on two counts of aggravated sexual assault and two counts of indecent liberties with a child and sentenced to life in prison for molesting Amanda's seven-year-old daughter. Now, George's parents, Harold and Cindy, continue to blame Amanda for his conviction. George's fiance Frida says she's also tired of Amanda's lies and believes there is no way George molested Amanda's daughter. Take a look. My relationship with George is amazing. We have a connection that I never imagined I could have with anybody. I love him more than I ever imagined I could love anybody. When they read the verdict, it was heartbreaking. You really have to ask yourself, is this little girl being honest? Is she speaking from experience or is she just going off of what she was told to say? I really do believe that she was coerced. Amanda is unstable. She went for the jugular. She threw out all of the information in a way that made it seem like George was a terrible person. It's very hard to see a lot of George's things. It just reminds me that he's not here where he should be. It's disgraceful that such a wonderful, honest, kind human being is being put through this. This is why I'm fighting to clear his name. We are in this fight until the very end, until George has the freedom that he so desperately deserves. I'm, uh, I I'm trying to get the facts out here, and that's what y'all want me to do. You want yes, the facts yes. out here, right? And so I want to be sure that we don't blur emotion and innuendo because that's how you say he got convicted. In fact, in his statement to the judge before sentencing, he said, my hope is that we would look at the facts here and not emotion and innuendo and that sort of thing. So you want the facts out, right? Yes, exactly. 
you're his fiance now, correct? That's correct. You're in love with him? Absolutely. So you don't pretend to be objective? No, to a certain extent, before our, our relationship became romantic, I was very objective and I did a lot of investigating, I did a lot of research. If you look at the personality profile of George and his background and his story and who he is to the people that know him, and you look at Amanda and you look at her history and her personality profile and the things that she's done with her life, false is allegations. Is this a profile that was done on George by a psychiatrist or no, a profile but that was done not on me by a psychiatrist? There is, so you I, don't have access to anything like that, especially on me. Not anything personal, So you no. wouldn't know that, especially considering you didn't know me during my marriage. You weren't in contact with George, as far as I know, during my marriage. No. I you not. don't know my children, and you most certainly don't know my daughter. I do not. I believe that one of the main reasons why George was wrongfully convicted is not just based off of the lies. It's based off of the investigation. There was a very poor and incomplete investigation done by the police. Any if evidence at all. the things that supposedly happened had happened, there would be DNA evidence. This period. took place the, overnight. She was not taken to the police until the next day. She also did she not shower between Yeah, if you believe the her story again. She changed her clothes and No, she didn't change her clothes. clothes. No, she she put on PJs, she got up the next morning, she put on new clothes, didn't change her underwear, and you took her right into the police. The nurse report said there was a slight redness and then they did swabs everywhere. They found absolutely nothing, zero, on her body anywhere. The medical exam was and done the cops were all telling him during the interview, oh, we're going to find all this stuff. You should confess right now because the forensic evidence isn't going to lie. We're going to find all this. They found nothing, ever, at all. Why did he back wash up her story? clothes? Why, out of three because years of marriage, did my husband with his, never... With his clothes and he wore The clothes them. stuff is and just a red that. herring. There are a lot of red herrings here. Um, it's true. I ask you the top three facts that you know he didn't do it, and you, you had none. I, um, I understand that. I'm this case not. against your son has serious flaws and deficiencies, but you have to understand that your quest here should be for the truth, not just to spring your son. Tell five different stories here about where the clothes were. I did not tell five different stories. Did the affidavit, the medical exam, the written statement, the police report all get it wrong? Yes. And later... Yes, we are coming after you because we believe you had a hand to put in my son in jail possibly for life. These are the allegations against George, okay? That... And this is what the child says, that he asked her to take a shower with him. Uh, he asked me, and he really wanted to. Touched her in places you aren't supposed to touch. Tickled her private part and butt. Asked her to touch his private parts. Said uh, had to be a secret. Touched her more than one occasion. Wouldn't let her get dressed. And wanted her to tickle on his private parts. Now, that's from her statements in the interview. Here's what George said during the police interview. Said, the stepdaughter has walked in on him in the shower and has seen his genitalia. That she has seen him and Amanda having sex. Now, here, here's the issue. Uh, he says stepdaughter showered in the master bedroom on this date. But then in the same interview, he contradicted himself when talking to the two detectives and said actually she showered in her shower while he was showering in his shower. Put lotion on stepdaughter's back in the past, taken a shower with stepdaughter when she was five years old. And what people don't bring up about that that I know, she was aware of that. She I absolutely did not. Yes, she That's did. That's a lie. You, You're lying you were, again. You're you lying again. You stood right there. I have done the exact same thing I did last year. No. Two years ago. If you yes. There was no improper touching. It was You took showers with her. He took showers with her. Because y'all both told me it was, was, told me it was because she was incapable of showering. That's also incorrect. He supplied a statement to you, Dr. Fell. I don't know if you've gotten it yet. But again, the police were misquoting him. Detective Deutsch on his report incorrectly said that it okay. had just occurred, it had not just, just finished occurred. pleasuring himself when the stepdaughter entered the room. I sent him questions in jail. He answered, the, he, he sort of answered them. He actually right. didn't. He just gave me a statement 
said most of those would be no. But one of the things he said is no, he hadn't just finished, but he did say he had just finished in the interview. Out of his mouth, I heard him say that. I can't explain some of the contradictions other than he was extremely nervous. He tries to over explain everything. So yes, in some cases, what did show that he did say that statement. He said he laid in bed with his stepdaughter the night of the alleged event, put his arm around her and watched TV. Which they've done before. Which they've done multiple times. S tickled the stepdaughter while lying in bed, touched the inside of the thigh and could have. And I, I think at another place he, he inserted the word accidentally. Could have touched her private part, allowed stepdaughter to tickle him on the belly, uh, went in the bathroom to brush his teeth while stepdaughter was in the shower. Brush his teeth while stepdaughter was in the shower. He says he's pinched his stepdaughter's butt all the time. And I understood this to be from when she was like one or two. I mean, it's very early on. And that stepdaughter saw porn on his computer. And he also told them that was accidental. He said child porn has accidentally appeared on his computer. Now, let's take a look at the, what he said in this police report. Um, uh, he said that the stepdaughter asked if she could come into the shower. George said he could let her come in the shower and sit on the bench while he showered. That was when they were five years old. Does that seem okay? Again, she was aware of it. I she wants to admit not. it or not. She I, was listen, I didn't ask you if she knows. I'm just asking you. She I'm asking with you. Her. Do you she think it's okay? Her. Well, then is it okay for her to shower with It's not something yes. I would have yes, done. No, if I, I lost the but mother and I am the female. So if, you don't, okay. so if you don't think it's okay for a mother to shower with her daughter, then you certainly I'm don't think it's okay for her stepfather to shower with her daughter. It's not that I'm saying that it's not okay. They told me they both took showers with her because she was incapable of washing her hair on her own. And there was no touching or any improper contact in the shower of any sort. I'm, he doesn't say that here. Right. George said he viewed pornography on his computer and did allow his stepdaughter to view it. Not no, allow. He, he did not no, say he I'm allowed her to. He said she came in when he had left the room and she came in when he walked back in. She was looking at it going, what's that? and he turned it off. That's not what he said. What he's saying is that there are basically three parts to a porno. There's a start, there's hardcore sex in the middle, and then there's a finish. And he said she watched the porn from the start to the hardcore the sex to the finish. And again, that's what he said. said. I understand that he said that at the time. So everybody says everything perfect every time. I say, well, wait a minute. You're saying, tell me now that the whole story is she had been asleep. You're down there watching adult pornography, which he admitted he watches on the computer. She had come downstairs. He was in the kitchen. She's seeing this on the computer. He didn't realize he was there. He goes over and watches her and, and then stops her from doing that. I asked him if he ever viewed child pornography on his computer, and he replied, of course. And that's a lie because that's what I... He said he has searched the Internet for, quote, Jailbait. And that's true. And then they say, well, what it, in your mind is jailbait? So the first part of it is a lie because the, the Detective Gregory misquoted my son. And then the second the part is yeah. true. He admitted he searched jailbait, but he says jailbait means that they're 18 or over and it's a thing that they do on the internet. And he's never, he also said that he that never looked, actually actively younger. searched for child pornography, but he did look at adult pornography. So he admitted that right up front. I was very concerned that you told the detective that the outfit in question you found in the dryer when walking out of the house to report the incident to the police. Correct. That's what you told the detective. Correct. But then in the police affidavit, you said you found the daughter's dirty clothes in the clothes hamper in the master bedroom. Then in the medical exam report, you say the clothes were on the floor of her bathroom. Then in a written statement to police, you said I looked in my bathroom, not there. Then on a police report of 10-22-13, skirt and leggings were removed from the dryer in the laundry room as evidence. Then trial transcript, you said you found the red skirt, which is the theme skirt for the next day that, that you had laid out before, that you found the red skirt bath towel in the dryer when leaving for the police station. So th I I'm confused because this and this go together. Mm -hmm. But this is different, this is different, this is different, and this is different.
you gave one, two, three, four, five different versions of where you found these clothes that triggered your suspicion. Now, when I've been doing this for 35 years. When a mother is focused on someone abusing their child, they see it with a clarity like a dog with a bone, but you tell five different stories here about where the clothes were. Why is that? I did not tell five different stories about where the clothes were. I've always said exactly what had happened, which well, was did, I asked my did daughter. Did the affidavit, the exam, the, the medical exam, the written statement, the police report all get it wrong? Yes. They all got that wrong. I don't know why I'm quoted as saying that. Amanda's mother joins us and says that we just won't believe what George's parents ask her to do. We'll be right back. What George has done to my granddaughter is beyond comprehension. I'm very happy George got the life sentence. The campaign George's parents started is really disgusting. Monday on an all new Dr. Phil. She claims her ex kidnapped their child. They would beat me. Nobody beat you. They had brainwashed him. Have you been brainwashed? She's the one who brainwashed me. That's Monday. George and Amanda have a three-year-old son together. We were very pleased to have a grandson, and then us not being able to see our grandson since that is, is just very upsetting. I want my grandson back, and we need to get him away from her, because I don't think he's safe. Well, that was Harold and Cindy talking about their grandson, who they haven't seen in over a year. Now, according to the two of them, their son's ex-wife, Amanda, coerced and coached her seven-year-old daughter into falsely accusing their son, George, of sexual abuse. Now, a jury recently convicted George of two counts of aggravated sexual assault and two counts of indecent liberties with a child for molesting his stepdaughter. Now, this is interesting because there was no DNA evidence whatsoever. There was no medical finding that would support some of the things that he was accused of, of doing. So this seems to pretty much have come down to a he said, she said uh, between this seven-year-old child and this man. Now, Amanda's mother, Kathy, says her former son-in-law, George, got exactly what he deserved. Take a look. What George has done to my granddaughter and my daughter is beyond comprehension. It was so hard for me to wrap my head around that anybody could even think of doing that to a child. Taking away a little girl's innocence was beyond shocking. She'll never have it back. I've lost so much trust in so many people because now I just don't know who to trust. The campaign that George's parents have started is really disgusting. Number one, they're slandering my grandchild, of all people, who's such a little innocent seven-year-old. And then they're slandering my daughter. I'm very happy George got the life sentence because I'd never, ever want him to do this to another child again. You believe that your granddaughter has been victimized? Yes, I do. There is no way I believe Amanda could make up this story. Absolutely none. Mandy doesn't have a vindictive bone in her body. Does yes. she have, no, ha I, let me finish, again. let me finish. My granddaughter cannot possibly have made that statement up without knowing some of the stuff, without, she doesn't know what sex is or anything no, else. Yes, There's a knowledge does. of it. No, she, she doesn't. Does. She doesn't have does. You're saying she doesn't have a vindictive? She perjured herself in court. I don't know and what she And then she also said there. in court, it hasn't been brought up to you. She says, do you want, you want George convicted, don't you? Our attorney asked her that. And she says, oh, no. Yes, she did. It's in the transcript. We know that. The very next day, that. then she goes on Facebook and says, thank you, Jerry, for convicting George. Why are you screaming George. at me? It wasn't my son. So she lied again. Lies after lies after lies after lies. I saw lies my daughter lies. and my husband's police interview tapes. I never knew the full extent of the allegations against him. Why did you say you did not want him convicted if he's done this to your daughter? He, the attorney asked me, you really want George convicted of these crimes, don't you? My answer was no, because I wanted his defense attorney. I wanted 
somebody to point out something somewhere to say that this never even happened. Oh. Oh. Little seven-year-old girls tell stories all the time. This is a pretty horrendous story. I don't know why she would do something like this to try to get something over on him. And you've got to keep yeah. the only person that I know of that's lied her about him and tried to get mad at her this, you. this morning. Her mother our, was yelling at her that morning. You. Yes, we are coming after you because we believe you had a hand to put in my son in jail, possibly for life. You've that's screwed up your little girl's yourself. life. You screwed up my grandson's you life. You screwed up our life. Do my I believe you're at my fault? My son's yes, life I do. has been screwed up by his No, father. it hasn't been. I have a serious question for Amanda when we come back. I want to ask you, now that this whole thing has played out, do you have some doubts about the authenticity of what George has been convicted of? No, I don't. You answered awfully quickly, which meant means to me you didn't really weigh that carefully. And I'm not... Uh, and I'm not I'll accusing you why. of doing anything wrong. I'm just asking you, first off, do you have any doubts about the authenticity of, of what he has been convicted of? No, I do not. I did before he was convicted. And what changed? I didn't know what George had said in his police interview tape. I didn't know what my daughter said in her CASA forensic interview tape. I was not told those things. I was not allowed to video, view those videos until after the trial. Okay, what was it he said in his police report that causes you to say he should serve his life in prison? I never said I think George should serve life in prison. But his conviction, I believe, is correct. Okay, what was it he said in his police report that makes you think his conviction is correct? When he talks about showering with her before, which I never knew. Yes, she did. I absolutely did not yes, know that. Did. We're talking about a man that's sitting in prison for yes. life right now. My, my ex-husband. So what I want to know is what was it that you specifically heard that caused you to say, I'm glad he was convicted? What my daughter said that he did to her, I knew she couldn't just pull out of thin air. Nobody told her to say these things. I know I didn't tell her to say these things, and that's why I believe he should have been convicted. Did you coerce, coach, or suggest to her things that would get him in trouble because you were mad at him, and then it took on a life of its own, and it ran away with you? I was not away. mad at my husband that morning at all. We were working on our marriage. Yeah, that wasn't my question about whether you were mad at him that morning. I'm saying okay. this could... Did this I say something to my daughter in my leading questions that could have put something in her head to make her go this route? Yes. That's what I believed before I saw her police interview tape and before I saw George's police interview tape. After I saw those, I had no doubt that this absolutely happened to her. So early on, you feared that you might have started a process in her mind until you found out other things where it said, I didn't start a process that would have this detail, exactly. could go this far, could happen that explicit, this way. How could she know of these yeah. things? How could she describe these things in such detail, such vivid graphic detail, when if she had never experienced it? And I do believe in these situations where allegations are made by a child, it is guilty until proven innocent. You have to believe the child until you find out otherwise. And I, you know, I don't know what happened here. I know your son used bad judgment a number of times. I know that we're in a volatile situation here. This was reviewed by a military tribunal. It was the Administrative Hearing Board. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and they had no finding of guilt against him. The that finding that would, his, the exact finding was that he had, did not commit serious misconduct, that he did not do anything, child pornography, did not hurt the child. And he was honorably discharged. He was. At the scheduled time. Yeah, right. right. So what happens with this family now, and how is a little girl doing? I'll talk about all of that when we come back.
need to get real? Go to DrPhil.com for advice on relationships, parenting, finances, and more. Plus, weigh in on your favorite episodes, share your stories, and find support in the Dr. Phil community. When you sign up for the community, you will automatically be subscribed to the Dr. Phil Show newsletter. Log on to DrPhil.com today. May I ask you, how is your daughter doing at this point? She's working with a counselor once a week, mm -hmm. and since that's begun, she's starting to get a little bit of her humor back. But she does struggle in school, yeah. which was not an issue she had before. Just being embedded in all of this, whatever happened, is very difficult for her. So I, we, we have to stop at this point. I do want to thank all of my guests for being here today. Um, if a child approaches you and makes an allegation or is in a situation that does not feel right to you, believe that child. Assume that child is telling the truth until you find out otherwise. But do your homework and find out. The worst thing in the world to do is not believe a child when they need help. second worst thing to do is to blame somebody for doing something that just simply didn't happen. So you have to believe them, but then you have to do your homework. Go to DrPhil.com for warning signs that your child might be uh, being molested or in some way taken advantage of. Uh, please take a look at that so you can be sensitive to it because they're not always forthcoming. Thanks for being here so long. You guys have a feel. I hope you make it. I hope you make it. Yeah. Yeah.